uh, make it perfect. Right click, go to um, a bunch of ways you can do this. You could edit edges and you could select you could select one edge with the selection tool hold shift select another uh, be careful with shift drag because you can select through your object so I just shift dragged I just lost two selections and I gained two more and if you do it in a weird angle like this you could lose some and not get others so be careful when you shift drag. Always you look around by holding alt and left clicking and dragging to make sure that you've got the right paces or edges selected or whatever you're selecting. You can select these two edges and you can use the scale option that's under the rotate and you can scale them. You could also right click and go to vertex. I'm deselecting just so I get rid of those edges and you can select by these vertexes. Basically they're the points that keep the faces together. So now I can take those, but you'll notice immediately that it kind of makes it off balance. What you want to do is you can um, you can undo that with Control Z. Go in here, select the bottom ones, and now you'll do it together. In fact, I'm going to select the tip also. So I've got all of those selected. And now I can sort of narrow this so it's at least a little bit closer to what we want in the end. You can also select and move with the move tool these vertexes. So if you want to move this up, make it more even, point it out a little bit more, you'll notice that these seem to be a little wide at the tip. So you can select them and just scale these individually, or scale these two without scaling these four here. I'm actually going to move it down a little bit more. Hit space and go to front view again. This is probably a better way to do it. The front view is typically like either the front or the side, it's probably the better view to use. When you do this view, you get, um, or if you don't use this view and if you use perspective, you're not going to line it up completely right. So it can mess up you, how you're drawing. You won't get the accurate view that you want. You want to be able to have an accurate representation. Typically, a 90 degree angle with the front view, like looking straight on at the target, is the way to go at least for this sort of modeling. It really depends on what you're doing, but for this it's very helpful. And I am just using the move tool, shift dragging, or I mean sorry, click drag, and I'm doing a selection box to select these just to make them more straight. Again, this isn't going to be perfect because I want to keep this short and I'm probably over 10 minutes already. But I'm going to, I'll keep recording, but I'm probably skip this part out. Alright, so this knife model here, or this sketch I drew, um, you probably can't tell from the original sketch, but what happens with this is that the hilt, actually, I'm not sure if that is the hilt. I don't know too much about swords, or I haven't reviewed it lately. But you have the handle, and you have the part above that, and then you have the blade. With this, the middle section is technically extruded outwards. So it's not completely straight on with the sword like it's depicted here in the model. So what we want to do is, there are really two ways to do this. Um, I'll show you both methods. The first method is, I'll do the easiest first, and this is probably what you'll do with a sort of simple model like this. What I will do is I will, I will use a boolean to remove 
this entire section and then create a new polygon, just a basic plane, and um, place that over that area and then combine the three sections because you'll be cutting it in half basically. So there'll be two parts. So the first step is make sure you're in object mode. Select your uh, object. Uh, notice right off the bat that your uh, origin is set to the middle because it's not necessarily lined up with the, uh, the model. Uh, that comes into effect later especially when you are about to export. Uh, for right now, just keep it in mind when you're doing later stuff. But right now, I just want to do a Boolean. So a Boolean is when you have two objects and you... It's sort of like doing math on a section and saying, like, if these two areas... If, they're in, if these two objects share the same space, then remove the same space or have only the space where they're touching or inside of each other, like you just want that section. It's better just to show this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitives and I'm going to go to Cube. What I want to do is click and drag and then click and drag up. You can see on the front view I'm getting a much straighter sort of model out of this also. So that's a plus. And you can look at the channel box and you'll see specific options for this. I just want to make sure that we have a, a pretty basic width, like no real difficult numbers. So I'm going to do 10 width, 50 height, 10 depth. You can actually basically change the width, height, and depth, x, y, z, uh, lengths with that. So we got that. It's not fully lined up. You can perfect it later. But drag this with the movement tool. Make sure in your top view, like I'm just holding Alt and uh, moving the uh, or using the middle mouse button to drag this around, but. Make sure it's lined up here in the top view. Make sure it's lined up in the front view. And make sure it's lined up in the side view. That's the whole point of using all three of these views, basically, to make sure or to do as good a job as possible to make sure that you're fully in the area. Now, there's one, there are two reasons why you can't just leave it like this. First issue, right here you get this sort of weird collision. It's really not a collision, it just looks kind of weird to have this thing coming out here. You could probably stretch that, make it longer, like scale this out or something. So, oh, now it doesn't show that front thing, but no. We, uh, actually, yes, I will do that, but for a different reason. Um, the reason you don't want to just leave it like this is twofold. Uh, one is because you have your models. Um, basically, every face that you have in your model, like uh, this will come up later, but it's like um, a polygon count for any model. If you have it too high, it could take up too much resources by the game. Like if you had a 